Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 510. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about stock market cycles and the presidential election cycle. Because cycles are something that I followed for a long time. I wrote about them in my book, Chapter 3 how the market moves in cycles and peaks in bubbles. And I also recently did a podcast about the Bitcoin bubble and how all bubbles appear the same to me. I've been through many, many bubbles because I've been an investor for a long time. And these bubbles all have the same characteristics when they are ready to pop, where people get all crazy, it gets very frothy, all rationale goes out the window and people become very emotional. If you haven't listened to the podcast where I inserted a recording of a Bitcoin investor, he exactly exemplified the top of a bubble, the peak of a bubble, and how crazy it gets and how irrational people are at the peak of a bubble. Well, having said that, I really don't see that people are being irrational right now. In fact, I see that a lot of fear has come back into the market, which is actually a really good thing because as investors, we always want to be contrarians and do the opposite. And you also have to have fear in the market because bull markets climb a wall of worry. It means you're always scared as an investor that something's going to go wrong or that you're going to lose money or that the market's going to crash or it's never going to go up again. All those emotions that investors have are perfectly natural and normal. And when people are the most negative is when you need to be the most positive because things are about to change. And when everybody is completely irrationally positive, that's when you need to start turning negative because too many people are all on one side of the boat and we know the boat tips over if everybody's on one side of the boat. You have to even out the boat and get some people going over to the other side. It's the same thing. Or I like to use the analogy of a pilot piloting a plane. See, one time I got to sit in the cockpit of a plane when I was in Montana and I got to sit in the pilot seat The thing that really shocked me is I never really realized it, but looking through the windshield, I couldn't see a thing. It was just a thick fog. And being used to driving a car and looking through our windshield and seeing everything clearly, it was really disconcerting to not be able to see a thing. Imagine if you were flying blindfolded. It was the same kind of feeling. Flying blindfolded where you couldn't see a thing, you had no sense of direction, And it was a really crazy feeling for me. But the pilot explained to me that they rely on the instrument panel, of course. And they look at different dials and that's how they know where they are. Well, it's the same thing as investors. We can't see where the market's going to go. It's as if we're blindfolded. But what we can see are the indicators. We can see where consumer confidence is. We can see how corporate earnings are. We can see whether they're making buybacks or not. We can see trends in the economy and and where trends are moving. We can see where interest rates are going. These things are indicators that help us understand how the economy reacts, where the economy is going to go. Is it going to speed up? Is it going to slow down? Are people buying more? Are people buying less? There's all, and of course the jobs report is huge there too because are more people employed and therefore have money to spend. So these are all indicators that we look at and they are our instrument panel as investors. So one of the indicators I wanted to bring to you was the presidential election cycle because this has been a really special indicator. It's been incredibly accurate And it's something that's really important right now because we are actually in the third year of this presidency 
and that is usually the best performing year out of a four-year presidential election cycle. Historically, the third year has been the best year. Now, why is that? Well, the fourth year is going to be re-election time. So in the third year is when you really want to be jacking up the economy and the people in power want to do everything they can to get re-elected. So they're doing things to try to get more jobs, try to get the economy going faster, get GDP growth up, maybe even jawbone the Federal Reserve not to raise interest rates so fast, hint, hint. Have we heard that one? I think we have. And so we are seeing all of the things that happen to try to get the economy moving faster, more trade deals in the works, those kinds of things that can really move the economy ahead. So in the third year of the presidential election cycle, historically, we have seen phenomenal performance. Now, is that a guarantee that that's gonna happen this year? No, it's not. I can't guarantee anything. All I can do is give you statistics and past history and cycles to help you look at your instrument panel and see if these numbers are gonna make sense and will bode well for this year as well. So let's take a look at some of the statistics that we know about the presidential election cycle. First of all, since 1946, stocks have risen an average of 17% in the following year after a midterm. And if you look at the lows of the midterm year, if you measure from there, from the lows, stocks have gone up an average of 32% over the next 12 months, which is more than double the average performance for stocks in all years. Now, if you look at a chart of the US presidential cycle and stocks from 1928 to 2016, and by the way, my source here is an article from MarketWatch written by Stephen McBride, and I will post a link to the article in the show notes and on my website. So you can see this fabulous chart that they have from Risk Hedge showing the four-year presidential election cycle and all of the average performance. It's a really stunning chart to see. When you look at the third year of the presidential election cycle, which is 2019, the average performance is just under 14% on average and is by far the best performing year of all four years in a presidential election cycle. The average for all year ones is close to 5%. The average for all year twos in presidential election cycles are 4%. The average for all of the third years in the presidential election cycle since 1928 are close to 14%, just under, and the average for all fourth years of a presidential election cycle, which will be 2020 for us, are just over 6%. So by far, the third year has been the best performing year of the presidential election cycle. Therefore, it's not surprising that we had this big correction in the second year and we actually had a negative 6% return for the year. Not surprising at all. That's following along the presidential election cycle, although we had a lot bigger year one and a very bullish year one in this presidency than we had in the second year. So we had a bigger year one and a worse year two than the typical average. And that just is what it is. But the fact of the matter is the third year of a presidential election cycle is by far and away the best year. As I said, the reasons for that are to prime the pump, to get everything ready and get the economy rolling nicely along so that by the time the election rolls around a couple years later, everything's looking rosy and re-election can happen. That's just how it seems to go. When you're going to make some changes in the economy, you wanna do it early in your presidency, get the things that might adversely impact the economy done right away so that that's out of the system by the time you're ready for re-election. So we tend to see in years one and two, a lot of things being done, a lot of changes being made, some things the economy isn't going to like as well, but by the time year three and four roll along, usually things are humming along a little better. So we'll see if that holds true for this year, but I wanted to pass along just some facts and statistics to you about presidential election cycles 
If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available. And if you have interest in becoming a better investor, join me in my VIP experience group. Send me an email at lpjhome at gmail.com for more information. I've also posted a survey in my show notes just to ask your input on how I can make the show better. And I do like to get demographics of my listeners so I know who I'm talking to and how to tailor my podcast better for the age group that I'm speaking with. So if you wouldn't mind filling out the survey at lindapjones.com podcast 510, that would be great. It's just going to ask your gender, your suggestions for improving the podcast, what you like, what you don't like. And it's a great way for you to give me some feedback and to make some suggestions about the podcast. Again, that's at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts and then go to podcast 510. And there's a survey there that you can fill that out and answer some questions. And if you've left a review, thank you so much for your reviews. I am loving them so much and loving to hear from you and how you are applying everything that you're learning in the podcast. I'm so proud of you and so grateful that you've taken the time to rate and review the podcast. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.